Today in the Backyard Battles, we're gonna open up a tote from my collection. What I wanna do is kinda of treat this like an unboxing. I kinda of just wanna pull something randomly off my shelf from my uh, immense collection over here. And uh, over the course of time, maybe you guys can choose one, I'll pull it out and we'll just go through all its contents together. All right, totes out of the way here. Let's go ahead and pick out the first figure from this bin. Uh, it is from Front Mission. This is a really interesting toy line that came out uh, from a video game that was kind of RPG, giant robot suit RPG on like PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. Uh, really neat figures. This guy twists around here. He doesn't pop off. I think I tried that a long time ago. Uh, but the hands are all interchangeable. And this was, this was early like, you know, 2000, uh, maybe 99. So, you know, action figures weren't really into the modularity at the time. Um, but these spider legs are pretty, or crab legs, I guess, kind of pretty cool. And they can come up and down here. And uh, I'll get his other weapons as we come out of here. In fact, I think most of this box is going to be, uh... oh, matching color scheme. Nice. Um, I love this figure. I recently took a picture of him out at the beach. He's got a little, little sand on him. That's actually what inspired me to open up this box because I saw him and i was just like man i miss these toys they are so pretty and so fun um he's a little more gangly than the other one so he kind of stands out besides being purple um, but i love the yellow striping they've got on him and he's got the two peg holes here and then on this arm here and on his back so you could actually swap out different weapons and backpack sets and then he also had some holes up here for like missile launchers or other type of system accoutrement and the hands had pegs built on there where you clip the weapons in. So I'm going to keep pulling stuff out here. He'll go in the back in front of the Beast Bomber. Um, oh, that's Evangelion. Evan, Evangeline, Evangelion parts and pieces in here. So I'm not sure that the figure made into this box, but I'll put that over here for right now. And here's how I store all the little bits and doodads. I take a pill seven day pill thing uh, which one day i'll have to replace these as i get older and older and be like screw these toys i need my drugs um but i put all the little parts in here and as we pull out more figures i'll kind of here, let me just so here's this dude's fist for example and i don't really care about fists right it's again a weapon so i didn't put those in here but um you can see that this one is just all hands in here and uh this one those are all fists which is where they're gonna stay because i'll never swap them out but i also won't throw them away i'm gonna keep this bad boy right over here in case we start finding more stuff oh here's this guy's spike shield this is pretty nasty i can imagine that just getting na it's just a nail it's like they just took let's just take a giant nail put it through a shield um zero imagination but incredibly useful weapon so that's pretty awesome. Ooh, his leg's a little bit soft over the, over the years here. Ooh. All right, so here's another. This is a big robot bin. Um, so this is Front Mission, and this is Armored Core. So I actually played Armored Core. Really fun, extremely customizable giant robot game. Uh, and this one actually is one of the most customizable of these action figures. This was eh, like 2003, 2004, uh, when these ones started coming out. Uh, and it's the same, so you can see it's kind of like an upgrade from each other. Like this was a few years earlier and Front Mission came out beautiful, I mean, beautiful paint detailing on this guy. And um, let me get a little more light on him there. There you go. Beautiful paint detailing on this guy. And the joints, not only are they, uh, you can take these systems off. Mm, I'm going to break this on camera, aren't I? Mm, I'm going to break it on camera. Oh, just like I did Dr. Doom. Oh. All right. I know this can come out. I really don't want to. Ah, there we go. Okay. So ball and socket peg in there. Uh, so it moves around really freely. And there we go. And it's got accessories that can go on the arm. Or you can swap it out and put in a regular arm. Let's try this again. Yeah. Wow. That is tight years later that's still really tight so you can pop off this piece and put it on here and what was cool in the video game is you know you would upgrade for like active personal defense or laser swords or radar so you could see the 
the dude quicker um, or uh, what was the other things that were that were smart too? Uh, targeting so you have better accuracy, um, all sorts of things, faster mechs, slower mechs, more armor, tons and tons and tons of options. And they kind of carried those over with the toys here too. Um, here, actually, I've got uh, this, this green dude. Sorry, I don't know their names and I didn't bother looking it up, but I guess that's the cost you get when I just randomly open a box and say, let's see what's inside. But I know this like pseudo radar dish went with a gray suit. Urgh. I can go on top of there. You've got this uh, disc. Go back here. Oh, oops. Or that can swap off. Go in here. I, I love these figures. They're so cool. And, and to see them scale, you know, this is a, it's a Joy Toy figure. It's about four inches tall here, right? And uh, so, of course, you know, a old school G.I. Joe. That's an awesome power suit for an old school G.I. Joe to be able to go in there. So um, let's get these guys out of the way. And let's keep digging through this box for more parts. We're going to put him in the back. And as I find uh, more pieces, maybe I'll try to swap some stuff out here. Let's turn off that light. I have these really uh, soft foam pieces that I put in there. Because these robots, especially these, these older Front Mission ones, uh, older, not that that old, um, they were a little fragile. Uh, and I think I see a guy's foot floating in here. So I move a lot. So I get very worried about, um, you know, you know, to lose pieces or just a box shuffling stuff around and getting smashed up with those foam things in there. All right. Another big old robot here. Good doom. This is from Lost Planet. I only played the first few levels of this video game. Um, and uh, my brother played it and finished it and said it was really good. And I was like, man, I don't know anything about that game, but that suit looks really cool. In hindsight, I just burped. I'm sorry. I had a bubbly before I started recording. In hindsight, though, yes, this mech is pretty sweet. Um, it's articulation is pretty good. These legs though are really weird and like, I don't know. It feels, the legs feel like this thing looks <laughs> top heavy, really, really brittle and wobbly. And if I was a pilot, I'd be afraid of stumbling forward. It's like the, I don't know, like the Soviet Union, not the Russians, the Soviet Union, like whipped together a power mech and was like, it's good. Send, send out, and, you know, that's kind of what they got here. So. Um, it does have these cool shoulder mounted, like the almost looks like a rail gun with the way it's split down the center there. Um, and it's got these, I'm assuming these help with stabilization and fin. Yeah. Cause it looks like there's a little exhaust at the tips of them there. So some sort of jetpack. I lost the bottom uh, exhaust too on there. Why they made it detachable. I don't know. Um, and the weapon does not come out of his hand. So all in all, pretty cool looking figure. But compared to, I mean, the design is, if you're into the video game, I'm sure, you know, it's like, oh, sweet, a Lost Planet mech or suit. You can kind of see where the pilot would go inside this thing, too, which I actually like about that. Um, I also like that there's no visible um, ports or eyes. And I kind of put these things on the side here, which could be the sensors, which I like when you redesign suits not around a human sensory right so like we have eyes nose mouth but a, a machine doesn't necessarily have that so i kind of like that they deviated from that too but that that all said um i don't know if i'll be keeping these guys in my collection oh there he is skating just doing a little ice skating um he's got these weird skids which are you know makes sense actually that the long skids are like this too but you also want things to be wide to help with stabilization and just like this figure uh he's very just laterally unstable Let me pop that leg back out here laterally unstable so you gotta spread them out and he kind of hunches forward so pretty neat but i'm debating purging these guys or not purging but selling these guys uh, the shield doesn't come out he's cool but i've got cooler so slide him back there all right a whole bunch of loose bags in here so this is a sigma six cannon um and you know those that line's really cool but i sold them all a long time ago but it's really cool for a giant rail gun uh, to be held by your Megbex. This one's a little bit big even for this guy here. So um, you get the idea, right? <clears throat> also goes really cool on a tank, uh, which I used one of those for. And this is a cannon that goes to an actual Gundam that you build. 
uh, model kit, but I have used it as a shoulder cannon for this dude. Man, that is like a crab tank kind of guy. Right, here's this guy's backpack. Uh, the fins don't move, flaps don't move. There's the, oh wait. <laughs> Either they move or about to break. No, that's about to break. That's not supposed to move. That's not supposed to move, so I can put a little blue put that on there too, but um, just a, you know, just a little backpack. Pop on the back, two pegs. These pegs, I'm constantly worried about them snapping off, so I'm very careful because it is pretty tight when I go in there. All right, ooh. Yes, another front mission. This was the first one I got. Uh, I love, slide crabby here. I love the blue, the blue on this guy. Um, just stunning. And I love this head sculpt with the flat uh, angled back that kind of goes back for a pointless there's no reason to have that angle back there other than the fact it looks sweet. Um, again, the two holes in the side, two, one hole each on the top, two holes on the side, and two holes in the back. So they kind of make these things, you know, very interchangeable as far as the weapon systems and backpacks went. Probably very RPG styled. I do like that they added these back pieces that open up like that. Completely pointless. <laughs> like, that doesn't help you with lift or drag or extra armor and there's no reason for it to flap out there because your knees don't bend that way like it's totally totally pointless um and let's see what it looks like when you flap those things out from i mean maybe it's creating some sort of drag going this way but that's not what you would want i don't know but he is sweet um and this one's actually pretty dusty because i kept him out on the shelf all the time Came with a big old cannon too oh man i miss these toys like that's why i wanted to do this too and not just share the collection, but like remind myself of like the toys that I already have. Like as I'm looking on eBay or Big Bad Toy Store, it's like, hey, you know, you don't need to buy any more robots. You got a whole box of them you haven't looked at. You've got toys at home. There's another front mission one. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Uh, I've already explained these. It's the same kind of concept, right? Um, this one's just a red one. And they actually, <laughs> I did not know, which is probably a good reason why I'm going through this. I have two of these bad boys. I'm pretty sure the reason I did that was I bought one and then I found another one that went on sale. Why am I justifying it? Of course I bought them because they're another one because they're cool. This, this little guy's little fin broke off there though. Um, but love that burgundy, that burnt red on there. Uh, and then because, you know, why not? You got yourself a red one and you might as well have a blue variant. Oh no, what's wrong with your ankle? Oof. So I did, uh oh. oh one of these, the ankle snapped and I, man, what's up with this guy's hip? It is all wonka do. Look at that, it's like uneven. It's like my legs. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Straighten the knee and then the leg will be even. <laughs> I know biology. All right, here we go. There, good. Okay, so you got a blue one, two red ones here. And, yep. And then it's from, ah, uh, unfortunately, here is the guy that I was, I knew I had somewhere. Still getting used to this background here. I kind of changed it up and put the, put the Beast Bomber as a cool backdrop. Um, it is, I don't know, uh, let me know what you think. It's too distracting. It's a cool having it back there. I got the maintenance crew kind of, here, let's see. I got the maintenance crew crawling on the top of it there. Um, oh, spoiler, those are also in the bottom of the box here. I had to move them out of the way, though. I got Maggie Weston. You know, I don't know. You know, it's kind of cool just to have that in the background. It's a really cool plane, so I thought I'd just uh, you know, always kind of have it there as a reminder. Anyway, here's another front mission guy. Oh, hey, this guy's leg's not broken. What the heck was I talking about? Oh, oh, oh it is. I, I just... Uh... Ah, that is held together by a blue tack. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, so... Super great range of motion there because it is held together by a sticky deck. Um, another, you, not much to say. I mean, you know, you, you got a blue one, you got a lighter blue one, you got a red guy who fell over here with sprung feet. This guy always reminds me of some sort of, I don't know why, some sort of knight though, like a chess piece. Like I, I so in my own universe, I just started calling these the chessmen. I think it was largely inspired by that suit there. Um, I love these, I don't know, like the the holes kind of punch through here in the open pauldron, which again, serves zero sense. If you're going to have armor to go on something you want to have solid or to be wings, but you know, not really creating much there. Ah, there it is. Yep. 
There's one of those snap pegs. I knew I had done that before and forever and steered fear of me in fear inside of me of doing that again too. So, um, so this is obviously a shared box because I've got a big old Gundam shield in here to one of those, uh, I think he's seven inches actually one of the seven inch models. And then a lot of other little pieces in here. Oh, here's one of the shoulder. See, this is a shoulder missile go on there and then yeah and doggone this was this guy's shield really cool but snapped out both the pegs so i think what i'm going to do now actually is i've got we have the technology um i can get the magnets uh those tiny little uh magnets that you see on miniatures and everyone's using for customization now i could probably just magnetize that on the shield i did that with a cat in america shield before too and that was uh pretty successful so you know give it a try and this is the future, you know, we have things like magnets now. Um, if I only could tell my past self that magnets exist. All right, so these two guys, I had to pull them out just to be able to start getting stuff out of the contents here. But um, these are some Gundam. I just did a Gundam video. Again, what inspired me to get inside this one as well. Uh, I love these two big guys. So they're a little bit larger than the other Bandai figures. Um, this is a regular Bandai figure here. Uh, this is actually probably a bad comparison. He's a little squat, even for the other ones. Uh, but they're a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. I don't know anything about Gundam. I don't know. Um, but they're pretty cool here. And let me use uh, barbecue here as a scale model representation. So, so you know, you got a three and three quarter inch figure. You've already had your time. Get out of here. Um, so again, when you look at just like how this could be a figure inside of a suit, that makes some sense here so it's pretty easy to have these guys stack up beside gi joe's uh, and their power armor suits they can walk around in these guys the uh the the front mission aka the chessmen as we you know, we would i refer them in our universe um were ai driven they were actually autonomous and uh you know very independent no no operators and for that you have the infantry running around them and it's even bigger. So having a bigger suit that was uh, autonomous was more fun. And I thought I had more of the parts. Oh, <laughs> that's why I've got two boxes of uh, big old robot stuff. So that's box number one. That's my first unpacking of a uh, box from one of my collection. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I want to keep doing this because it's so fun for me to be able to relive seeing these toys. Uh, I went kind of faster. I'm trying to keep it to under 20 minutes. Um, if you want me to slow down or go back over more, I'd gladly pull this box out and examine one figure at a time. Like, I have so much love and uh, memory with playing with these figures, and gosh, they're so dusty. And this guy's got sand in them from the last time we went to the beach. Um, and I've got another box. Um, spoiler, it's the continuation of this box because the collection got big enough to spill into two. Um, so I'll just do that one next. Uh, unless you guys overrule and be like, hey, man, uh, I saw something that I really wanted to see on the shelf here. Let me see some Mythic Legions, Marvel Legends. You know what? I'm just going to pause here and pan the collection. And we'll go ahead and pick you up here and pan out. So, yep, there's the setup there. Uh, this is all new. I don't know. Playing around with it. And uh, we're moving, so that's a hot mess. But, yeah, so here's the collection over here. This is all G.I. Joe. Um, each one of those individual bins is G.I. Joe. And then up here at the very top there, those are Joy Toy. You can see I've kind of got them in like tackle boxes. I'll give you a close up what this actually looks like here. So yeah, so each of these tackle boxes here are Cracker Jack full of, these are Marauders and G.I. Joe. Um, this is some Crimson Guardsmen. So all these little trays here. And then I've got the uh, the towers here. This is mostly what my boys and I play with. These are the quick, ref quick uh, access ones. But in here, for example, yep, those are just Rebel pilots, but uh, oh, oh my goodness! Oh, gallon grocery bags of stormtroopers, uh, and then up here, got a joy toy inside tackle boxes, and then those are a uh, that's a paddleboard, you know that. And you got some more trays here. Those are joy toy, uh, right, right here. I was pointing my camera, like you could actually see me touching the screen, but I'm an idiot. And then these are uh, characters actually uh, in those top ones there too, so they have a special place. Um, Ninja Turtles. Uh, these are more G.I. Joes in here. A whole, whole kit and caboodle G.I. Joes here. Um, Fantastic Four somehow made it over here. So I'm not sure what's going on. They're empty drawers. And then these are all our aliens and monsters. Uh, some Crisis. This one's brand new. That's why it's in here. Um, that's why all the shelves are empty because we're going to sort this stuff out. Uh, and then over here we've got 
uh, McFarlane, uh, 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 Masters of the Universe classics, the Mythic Legions, fantasy figures, Witcher, all sorts of stuff in there. Yeah, that just keeps climbing up there, keeps climbing. Larger vehicles, and then these are all G.I. Joe or Star Wars vehicles on the side over here. And then up here, whoa, lots of G.I. Joe vehicles. They're so hard to store. Uh, Marvel Legends, Marvel Legends, DC. Uh, some You can see some Exo Squad sitting over there. Uh, the G.I. Joe Terror Drone. If you haven't seen the Exo Squad video, um, I'm going to reshoot that because my camera was not operating. Those are custom Marvel Legends buildings. I'm going to reshoot it and show off my collection. But hey, maybe I do it with one of these. Um, random six inch figures with some G.I. Joe classified. There's some McFarlane Warhammer. There's a Batman. You know, just a Batman. And this is kind of the train we use. Oh, big old bins of monsters. And then that was tragically the Defiant Space Shuttle Launch Complex, which is, uh, you know, what it is now after several moves of moving in the military. And last, we've got a custom four and a half foot tower that I made for Mythic Legions. We are taking this all apart right now as we're about to move. So, yeah. All right, gang, that's it. That's what we got today in Backyard Battles. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, let me know which one of my pieces of collection you want to be able to see. I'm more than happy to drag your stuff out and take a look at it. If you want me to go faster? Want me to go slower? Just let me know. Uh, and thanks so much. And that is the totality of my madness. Everything wall to wall that's in here. Uh, so I'm going to keep pulling a box at a time and just kind of doing an unboxing of my own collection and reliving my love for the toys I already own. If you see something or if there's a certain collection that you want to be able to see, let me know and I'll grab that box and pull it out. Um, there are multiple boxes of the same collection, so as many of you respond, uh, can keep responding. I probably won't run out of stuff to be able to showcase. So, hey, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you want to see.